When was the last time you experienced the satisfaction of everything falling into place after a period of difficulty? In our last episode, we explored sites of ancient beauty and cultural practice while acquainting ourselves with the Ionian Marina and its walkable surroundings. We then spent a few hours in the company of our marine surveyor Steve, whose Chino expertise led him to the conclusion that a lot more was wrong with Trinity than we had originally anticipated. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Your support helps us greatly and means the entire world to the Trinity crew. And for those returning viewers, we can't thank you enough for joining us once again. Drop us a comment below and let us know how you're doing. We love hearing from you guys. Moving on, with our stay now indefinitely extended, it's time to make use of said time and to finally get started on our recommended boat work. Join us this episode as we have our final engine check start, begin our anti-fouling application process and meet with the team from Waypoint Sales for a full vessel rigging inspection. Will this week's news be more palatable than our last? We'll let you guys decide on that one. Without further ado, let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. Eight o'clock for people are already up working on the boats. There you go. Such a nice view from here because you can see right out into the gulf. Surrounded by so many mountains. It's really, really pretty. It was time for the three of us to check on Trinity once again. After receiving advice from shipyard technicians and conclusive evidence from our very talented surveyor Steve, we found a lot more to be wrong than Trinity than we thought. Let's join Martin in the yard for a briefly comprehensive rundown of the issues collectively noticed over the last few days. Okay, we have Trinity out on the hard to do some bottom work of the winter and to do some work on the top as well. We might as well, we're gonna have to stay here. But I'll start from the back. The rudder and all the steering gear is fine. You can hear that with the propeller. We've heard this sound coming through. We've had it for quite a while, uh, probably from the start, to be really honest. You don't, you only hear it on low revs when we're in first gear. The problem is that we've got some play here in the cutlass bearing inside this P bracket. It needs to be replaced. Everything needs to be cleaned. There's a lot of sealing and all around here that needs to happen. The sacrificial anode here. So we're gonna replace all the anodes. They tend to attract any of the rust to them instead of the other parts of the boat. But again, she just needs a good clean and she needs the whole bottom anti-fell. So two new coats of anti-fell. Here's some scrapes. This is where the surveyor was excellent. Really, really good. He took some scrapes. Uh, these are the through holes. These are gone pink. But it's according to the surveyor is a sign that they're really old and there's some electrolysis issues happening on the boat, which he gave me some solutions for. We might put that into a later video. When we bought the boat, they said that all the through holes and the sea cocks on the inside were all replaced a year ago. The surveyor said, absolutely false. These are old, this happens when they're old. I've had a plumber look on the inside, the same, and, and the sea cocks are, are, are beginning to show signs of, of pinkness as well, which is a problem. Now, the next big thing really is that the keel. You can see the keel, there's a lot of layers on the keel, a lot of problems with the keel. Just in pretty bad shape, more than anything else. You can see there's a lot of flaking of the old layers of anti -fell. Now, they did say it was a big job that we needed to, there's a lot of rust here, hitting. Once again, these are things that should have been caught when we had the boat surveyed originally, these need to be treated. Possibly put an anode on the keel as well. Definitely sand it all down. They're actually recommending a big job, a sandblasting job. But we didn't have the time for that. We might have the time for it now. But anyway, it needs a big job. A filled primers and then two coats of brand new anti -fail. And We're gonna get a black anti fell this time. It wasn't too bad with regards to growth. There was a few barnacles, quite a few barnacles. But nothing bad. I mean, we have the guys here at Ionian have had a look at it. They're really good. And they've had a look at the engine as well. We've had lots of leakage problems with the engine, as you probably know. The engine's cut out numerous times on us reversing. It's very dangerous. We've even lost the engine out at sea uh, the first time we went out, which was really bad because we had a big swell and we started taking waves on the side and also. So we can't continue like that. We've had two services, they haven't fixed the issues. What we're doing this time around is we've had a, a technician come in, they've had a look at it, they found the problems already with a minister they're very good anyway we have an amazing surveyor he's he's, he's put a 40 odd page report together as opposed to the first survey we had done 
the pre-purchase survey, which is four pages, uh, is coming up a ton of recommendations. Which is great for us. It means we can get the boat park fixed and we can also seek some recourse then. And actually do some sailing. And do a lot more sailing. We've got a great season two uh, planned. Stay tuned for the next couple of episodes. We're doing a lot of boat work, which is going to be great. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of work up top. We're going to fix up the stripes. We're going to do the teak decking. We've got to buff out some of the damage that we did at Porto Bellaro, the gel coats. It's all new to us, but we're looking forward to our first season on the heart, doing the repairs that you have to do. The girls are going to be doing some cosmetic repairs on the inside. There are, there are other issues. We had the anchor replaced and the front end replaced, all the tackle and the motor for the windows. The engineer said to us that the, the rigging was extremely loose as well, and this was a problem. We've got a, a rigging inspection coming up, so fingers crossed, I'm sure they're going to find lots of things. So on the other survey, that was all good too, wasn't it? Yeah, when we had the pre-purchase survey, the rig was amazing, nothing wrong with it. And as you know, the first thing we found was the sails were ripped. The sails are very old. They were the original sails, and they need to be replaced every five years. They're 15 years old. To do a full rig, rig inspection. It looks great, very comprehensive. They have a full breakdown of what they do. So looking forward to that too. With some major details laid bare, hopefully you will have a better understanding of Trinity's current woes, as well as some better exposition as to which repairs we are and will be going forward with over the next few days. With rhyme and reason out of the way, we saw it fit to return to the apartments for the evening, ready for our final engine checks, some repairs, and our rigging inspection the following morning. Join us on the way. I don't know if you see all that break on the water. This, everybody's fishing along this coastline, it's unbelievable. Look, it's not the fishing rods. Each, each angler is about 10 rods, it's got a couple of 10 rods. Then there's a ton there. This guy's over here in the corner, they've got a ton as well. There must be 10 or 12 rods out on that corner. As we come back to Cleopatra, I literally like put pillows and towels on the floor last night <laughs> to try and make something more comfortable than the mattress. Shh! Swings and roundabouts. Thought I'd shoot a short video to let you all know what we're doing at the moment. It turned into a, a massive job, so we're going to be here for 10 or more days. Part of the little apartment here at the marina for a week. And just while we organise the first set of jobs, get the tradesmen, technicians involved. We're going to do as much as we can as well, but some of the jobs are very, very specialist. And the first time around, it's best to just observe and see how they're done. We've already learned a lot. For next time around when we do it ourselves, it'll be a different experience altogether. But it's gorgeous here. A ton of boat work going on. All the boats that are on the hard. It's great to watch actually. A day of inspecting and explaining finished, we are all excited to get in and learn a ton about her and what it takes to fix, maintain, care for, and pimp out our ride. Speaking of, Steve joined us again this morning to finalize his inspections on our Yanmar engine. Additionally, so that we can further inform the repair technician coming this afternoon, Steve has also stayed to relay the following engine issues to Captain Martin. As you know, our engine had been frequently cutting out in reverse and smoking up a lot this season. We ran compression tests on the engine and tested the injectors, which turns out needed to be replaced. At low revs in reverse, fuel wasn't being atomized correctly by the injectors, which caused the engine to smoke and eventually cut out. Additionally, our engine was very noisy. We soon discovered that the cutlass bearing, which keeps the prop shaft aligned, was old and worn and also needed to be replaced. We also had some salt water showing in the prop shaft bilge, which indicated that the seal also needed to be replaced. Has this been broken a long time, do you think? Five years. Oh yeah, five years. Volvo. And after... Okay, it should have been replaced. Okay. Normal, it's about 10 years yes. inside. Yeah, okay, long time. Normal, four or five years, I replace yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> like lots of things. <laughs> Outside, little down. Yeah. In the tube. Yes. It's not okay. Yeah. But you fixed it, yes. Now it's. Now it's straight. Engine, it's very, very good. Okay, good. Very good. The screw. Now it's very good. Excellent. Lock. Friday, Saturday. I don't know. Ten days, it's the parts. Come. Yes. Yes. It's not open now. I don't know. Yes. Okay. Stay. Normal, all engines, the block and the valve, yep. and the seals. Yes. The seals. Sometimes they wear. wear. Very hot inside, yep. little problem. Oil out. Oil comes out, yes. yes. Okay, well, we'll see. Okay, that's excellent. The cutlass bearing, soft seal, it's okay. The engine, straight. 
After several services in several different marinas, we can now confidently say the technicians at Ionian have finally hit the nail and our engine troubles on the head. We had the engine block broken down and cleaned with new seals and injectors installed while also having anodes placed on the prop shaft. The engine now purrs and runs very smoothly. With restored spirits, it's now time to move on to our rigging inspection from Waypoint Sales. Let's join in. So well, here's the rigging guys now from Waypoint. Gonna go up and check the rigging. Before our work is completed, let's delve into the explanatory realm of boat rigging. Rigging refers to the intricate network of wires and ropes that support the mast and sails on any seafaring vessel. Standing rigging consists of fixed elements like shrouds and stays, providing essential support to the mast. Although traditionally made of stainless steel, modern sailboats may use materials like denima, the world's strongest fiber. Further, we also have our running rigging. This includes movable elements as opposed to fixed, such as halyards, sheets, and control lines that are crucial for controlling the sails and other moving parts of the vessel. Regular inspections on both standing and running rigging are vital for safety, performance, and early issue detection. Why? Well, a reliable rigging is your lifeline at sea. Imagine the consequences if it fails. One notable incident being the 1979 Fastnet race where several yachts experienced rigging failures in stormy conditions, which ended in catastrophe. This event set a safety precedent and encouraged significant improvements in yacht design and safety standards from then on. That's some high peak going up there. Plus we're up on the hard so it's even higher again. Anyway, hopefully there's not too much wrong. But so we're in for a bit of a surprise. Surprise! Minor fix, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> Another day, another upgrade. It's time to check in on Trinity in the dockyard one final time and see if the yard technicians have begun prepping her for our next big job. Follow along. Just went to the shop to get something to eat. I'm just seeing Trinity has been sanded. Her keel at least. Zip her on the floor. Hello. It actually looks really cool. <laughs> I touched it accidentally before and it's just all over my fingers. But hey, pretty cool. How do we feel? Yeah. <laughs> How cool does it look? Bit of a difference. <laughs> so she's had one round of sanding done this morning because they have to let her actually dry out quite a bit before they do the sanding and then the anti-fouling. She actually needs two coats of anti-fouling because it hasn't been done in God knows how long. 
Anti-fouling. What is it and why do we use it? Anti-fouling is like a shield for your boat beneath the waterline. It's a specialized paint designed to prevent marine growth like algae, barnacles, and other organisms from attaching to the hull. The primary goal of using anti-fouling is to maintain the boat's performance and fuel efficiency. Without anti-fouling, these organisms can create drag, increase fuel consumption, and potentially slow down the boat. Additionally, the choice of color isn't just an aesthetic one. It also indicates the strength and type of anti-fouling. Darker colors often imply a more potent formulation. Interestingly, in the early days, sailors used copper sheathing to protect their vessels from fouling. The concept has evolved and today's anti-fouling paints incorporate copper and other biocides to deter marine growth. Regular maintenance and re-coating are essential for optimal protection and performance. Hmm, she's looking better already. Bit of a difference to the keel. Quite a strong smell actually. The difference that's making already. Better. You're getting some life back into you, aren't you, Trinity? Huh? Some love and care. Now we have to get in and clean the hull ourselves. She's got quite a few stains on her. That's actually from the air condition. We let this anti and dry for a few days and then we'll we'll do some cleaning. So as you can see, we've had the, the hull uh, repainted. anti fell and we've changed it to black. It's, it looks a lot better. And this time around, the surveyor said we were suffering from what looked like a little bit of electrolysis around some of the skin fittings and on the keel, around the shaft and the, the propeller. So we've installed, um, under his recommendation, we've installed an anode here on the keel on both sides. So that should help with the electrolysis. Yeah, so you see it's on both sides. We have two anodes on the prop now, though we've had one uh, put, put on here, there wasn't one on the end of the propeller, that'll help as well. Uh, there was one here on the prop shaft that wasn't very effective, here's the old one. It's been on a very long time, but it didn't really, it did a pitting in it, that means it's working. So we've cleaned the shaft right down with an angle grinder, we've painted it, everything with anti-fouling. The shaft has been totally realigned now from the engine, the engine mounts were adjusted, the alignment was done. The pattern looks great, really, really smooth, get a lot more efficiency out of it. All in all, it's been a very, very worthwhile exercise. She looks great. She looks fantastic. Yeah, she's a bit scruffy with all the work, but you can see changing the bottom to black has made a big difference. I think it looks, looks awesome now. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> Trinity's getting some love put back into her, aren't you, baby? You're getting some love. With both existing, currently occurring, and future repairs shown, detailed, and paid for, you all are in for a treat as we continue on with Trinity's transformation over the final two haul out episodes to come. Join us next week as I take off traveling and Martin and Sharon give some internal and external boat work a right old try for the very first time. Success levels TBD. Are you ready? We can't wait to escape the order with you. See you there, guys. Oh.